All right, guys, we have a 2008 model Ford Ranger, three liter turbo diesel. Um, problem with the car is sometimes it's hard to start intermittent. Uh, it will crank, but it will not fire. Uh, and blowing lots of black smoke. Um, and that's the complaint, so let's um, diagnose this car, guys. All right, first thing I just wanna show you quickly is the amount of um, black smoke coming out of this tailpipe. Uh, you can see the whole tray is black. I don't know if the camera picked up or not, but just the whole tray, everything is just black. So he's been doing a little bit of driving, but um, yeah, we got the car here now. So let's see um, what we can find here. Uh, just to be honest. All right, first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna just hook up our scan tool and we're gonna see if there's any faults. And I, have already checked it there is no fault to go by okay second thing uh, let's go for a drive and let's see what it feels like see it's 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 a little bit hard to start too it's a long crank um, at times it's hard to start uh, but if I close that door so it won't be as noisy um, but it revs good it revs good I don't feel any uh, misfire any um, agitation uh, it, it, it's, it feels like it's got uh, plenty of power um, um, at idle Um, maybe let's go out there and have a look if there's uh, a lot of smoke coming out of this car first. Alright, I'll get you sort of focus in that area and let's see if we can pick up uh, any um, smoke coming out of there. probably put this light here so we can sort of sort of see if there's any smoke coming out so I'm gonna go and wrap the car and we'll see how much smokes coming out I hope that camera picked up all that smoke um, and uh, yeah it, it is a lot of smoke even on, on, on just idling you can see a lot of smoke coming out um, the color of the smoke if you ask me it's kind of like a really sort of black smoke um, if that helps um, with the diagnostic but uh, yeah. Let's take it for a drive and see um, what sort of uh, power we get from out of this car. It's pretty dark out there, but yeah, this is the only time that I sort of get time to do videos. But I'll explain to you doesn't feel too bad I just uh, took off on first gear let's go out on the road yeah, seems like it's got plenty of power guys I don't feel any hesitation plenty of power I'm already doing 80 kilometers an hour it's got plenty of power let's just uh, go back to the shop 
it's really dark out there so I can't really see how much smoke's coming out of the tailpipe but according to the customer there is a lot of smoke when he drives so we'll just go by that and um, I have driven it during the day and it is definitely a lot of smoke coming out constant smoke and even at idle when you rev it you can see there's plenty of smoke okay we're just gonna go back to the shop Next thing I just want to do, I just want to quickly uh, scroll through all the data uh, and see, let's see what kind of uh, result we get here on the live data, what do we see, um, see if you can figure it out that way. So let's just start the car up and just we scroll through some data. I like to do this uh, sometime when I don't know uh, where to go, like there's no fault code to sort of give us direction. Um, so let's just pull up some uh, live data. Let's go down and see uh, what we can see here. Um, accelerator pedal sensor. Um, definitely sensor one, sensor two. Let's let's have a look at that. Um, see how they sort of following each other um, on different revs. They're following each other, so I'm pretty confident that's uh, not going to be our problem. Um, let's keep scrolling. Uh, barometric pressure. We got 97 kPa, uh, which is good. Uh, these are RPM 720, which is good. I can smell a bit of a diesel from this exhaust gas. Easier. Uh, looks like it's doing something. It's it's changing that number so we okay with that uh, for now anyway um, coolant temperature sensor 63 degree it's a pretty cold night out there cars um, still warming up so it's pretty good I'm not too concerned about that temperature is going up slowly um, fuel rail flash pressure um, 32 uh, if my memory serves right 32 33 is um, is a pretty good number uh, I think I've done a video on Ford Ranger before too and I think that was the number we are seeing but we can pull up that data later let's just keep going intake temperature sensor looking good manifold absolute pressure sensor let's get that out the way see how our absolute pressure sensor is 104 I don't necessarily think it's a problem but it's a little bit higher than other cars I've seen maybe it's because the car is running the throttle plate might be controlling it I don't know let's just turn it off let's turn the key back on let's see where that stays 105 I think it's a little bit high uh, 105 kPa but um, I'm not too worried about it. It's uh, I would like to see around 100 or around barometric pressure up there, 97. That would be a good number, but it's a little bit high. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm not too concerned about it. Let's just rev it and see how much boost pressure we get here. Okay, I'm just gonna flat rev it. I think we almost hit 175. Let's try again. 180. Let's go one more time, just flat revving. If that almost hit uh, more than 200 right there, I saw. Um, so, just freeze that for a minute. When this mass, when you feel absolute pressure hit on a turbo diesel car, I've seen more than 200, almost 200 kPa. Usually that's a good indication that turbo is making a good pressure. Okay, and also, there is no large sort of leak on the intercooler hose or 
intercooler or anywhere on the turbo lines there's no last that's sort of good indication there okay so I'm happy with the um, manifold absolute pressure sensor okay let's keep going here mass airflow sensor um, I don't know if that's the right number uh, let's get that out of the way for a minute um, mass airflow sensor I, I, I don't know it's sitting around six seven grams per second but um, I don't know if that's a good number or not so just let, let's just rev it see what what sort of changes we get here that's uh, that's pushing like 140 150 150 grams per second uh, it is it is working it is doing something so we know but we will come back to that um, let's keep going here fuel temperature sitting at 20 degree which is fair um, that's all we have here okay now only thing I'm a little bit concerned is about a concern about is mass airflow sensor and maybe fuel rail pressure okay let's let's um, unless we can get that out the way there let's just select that so now what I want to do is I want to go to um, okay right here what I want to do I want to just put uh, Ford Ranger and we pull up some information here this is a good website if you guys want to use it uh, for a lot of things like uh, repair solutions you know they'll put uh, good scan tool scope data uh, a lot of things you guys can check it out it's called tat.net.au uh, okay so all I'm interested in the scope scan tool data maybe 2008 this is the same engine same car at idle on and also I want to see at 2000 rpm all right all right that's at 2000 rpm that's at idle so let's start the car up and let's pull up our data here so see at idle we are getting about six seven grams per second and fuel rail is about 33 34 okay so let's go back here and let's see this is at idle um, I'm looking for fuel rail pressure it's 35,000 kPa which is 35 megapascal that's what we got on our scan to around 33-34 megapascal that's looking good mass airflow sensor right here guys um, 624 gram per second that doesn't make sense 624 is a lot of gram per second so they meant to say maybe six gram per second 6.2 I would say so we got six grams per second for mass airflow sensor and fuel rail is 35 uh, megapascal okay let's go back to our scan tool data at idle in, in the car is running uh, and we got the same exact data okay also let's go back to our 2000 rpm up here you can see at 2000 rpm we need to see um 2000 rpm we need to see fuel rail pressure 59 megapascal okay and also mass airflow sensor uh, we're looking about 32 grams per second okay let's go back to our scan tool data and let's let's wrap the car up to about 2000 uh let me pull up our, our rpm as well here all right let's have a look all right i'm gonna hold the rev around 2000 rpm that's about 2100 2000 and we got about we got about 55 54 and mass airflow sensor is about 25 26 grams per second and I think let's go back there an idle mass airflow sensor is about 32 and fuel rate pressure is about 59 okay uh, it's a little bit low number but it's pretty close pretty close to what we have okay now let's just go and try a different maybe uh, scan tool data you can't always rely on one data sometimes you gotta sort of scroll through a couple of more 
Dara's too. Uh, PJ Ranger again. This one's the same engine and everything. Let's pull up our idle diagram and also 2000. Okay, um, 2008. All right, let's see fuel pressure here. All right, on this one we see fuel pressure about 55 megapascal. Okay, 55,000 kPa. Uh, that's at 2000 rpm okay and on mass airflow sensor we got about 31 grams per second okay uh, and let's go to idle and idle is about 32 megapascal 33 megapascal for fuel pressure and mass airflow sensor is about 7 grams per second okay i don't know why they have 763 gram that's a lot of grams per second i don't know why it could be a scan tool problem but on my scan tool it's not showing me that it's showing me six grams per second and i think that's correct okay so according to this data i'm pretty confident that our fuel rail pressure is good mass airflow sensor is good enough uh, it's not close to where I want to be at 2000 RPM. I mean, it's up there, 30. I saw 30 at 2200 RPM. Uh, 46. Um, about 2000 RPM, we got 29 uh, megapascal. Sorry, 29 grams per second on mass airflow sensor. We got 60 psi on fuel rail. So it it's definitely increasing with the uh, i think maybe temperature than before but i'm happy with these numbers it it does match all the known good uh, um, data we got here so so i don't really see anything wrong there guys okay um so i do not think the scan tool is gonna help me that's what i'm trying to get at here okay um scan tool really is not going to help us in this situation guys um, so the car is the car is running good there's no misfire there's plenty of power um, uh, i mean but it it's it, it's it uh, uh yeah it's making a lot of black smoke though so in that situation when you think about it there's only a couple of possibly possibilities there i can think of you know um, some of them are sometimes a partially leak easier valve can do that i've seen it uh, a turbocharger leaking oil into the engine uh, can also do that um, Leaking injectors can do that. Uh, maybe even compression. Uh, if one of the cylinders is low on compression, it's not going to burn the fuel um, correct. So that's definitely going to cause that too. So there's a couple of things I'm thinking I want to check. So let's just do one first easy test, which is going to be just checking for any oil leak from the turbo. Okay. So for that one, I'm just going to focus in there where the turbo comes in. So the turbo charger is on this area here, comes this way through the intercooler, comes back out in this hose into the throttle body. So all we're going to do is just take that hose off and see if there's any sign of, you know, oil leakage or something like that right there. Okay, let's do that. I'm simply gonna just take this hose off just the intercooler hose going into the throttle body and I'm just gonna see if there's any sign of oil leakage or anything like that in there I mean all turbos gonna have a bit of a you know oil uh, in the intercooler which is normal um, but I don't really see a massive amount of um, oil there. So 
what we can do here is uh, we can start the car now and let's see if the smoke clears in, in the tailpipe um, with the turbocharger hose off. We're just going to run it, rev it, see if that makes any difference. Okay, let's do that. I'll take the camera to the back. And I'm just going to go and start the car and rev the car. Let's see what happens. There's a lot of smoke. I don't think that really helped. Uh, so I'm just gonna go on a route of uh, process of elimination right here, guys. Because um, I really don't know which direction to take here. So that didn't help. So we can put that back. We know uh, that's not our problem. Uh, it's always best to, um, you know give it some time let it idle sometime it could be the exhaust is full of whatever it's leaking oil fuel and it might take a little bit time to clear up even if you did uh, eliminate the uh, problem like just by me taking that hose off from the turbo so i'm disabling turbos there's nothing going inside the engine from the turbo right now so but we still see a lot of smoke same amount of smoke so more than likely it's not the problem so i'm going to put this back and move on to our, our next uh, test okay next test i want to do is maybe we're going to block the ezr valve and see if that makes any difference so let's go to the ezr valve now all right, on this engine, the exhaust gas um, comes up this way um, through the EZR cooler here and then goes into the in engine on the other side, uh, EZR valve is on the other side. So this is the easiest uh, place to block the EZR on a Ford Rangers and BT50. So we're just going to use that uh, right there. So we're just gonna take that bolts. Uh, you don't have to take it all the way off, just enough. All right, just the 12 mil uh, nuts here. Now we're just gonna use my great invention here. Just piece of flat metal. I love this to block easy as any metal flat plate will do guys. Just cut it to the size. And we're gonna just stretch that a little bit. As much as we can. And we're gonna slide this plate in there in the hull, in the pipe like that, okay? just like that and we're gonna tighten that bolt back up that should be enough to um, block out easier all right now let's go and start the car and let's see if the smokes cleared See, at times it doesn't want to really start on first go. That's something um, a customer has been complaining about too. Okay, I'm going to go wrap the car now. Alright, as you can see that did not help. Okay, so we'll just wait a little bit, let it run, and we'll try again. Uh, like I said, sometimes there could be 
uh, oil or fuel in the exhaust it takes time to clear do it again and it's not helping okay guys all right now let's hook up our uh, pico scope and uh, while we have the pico scope hooked up first thing i want to do is maybe check the compression um, but before we do that, let me get that uh, blocking plate out of the uh, our exhaust uh, EGR valve. <coughs> Great invention, guys. You should have this one in your toolbox. It helps a lot with diagnostic when it comes to EGR problems. All right, we got the plate out of the way now. What I want to do now is do a compression check. Okay, so I got my Pico scope hooked up. All I'm going to do is put this negative positive lead on my channel one, on battery positive and negative. That's all I'm going to do. That's all it takes to do a relative compression test. A nice feature about um, Pico scope. Okay, let's uh, open my Pico scope. Let's go compression test and it's a four cylinder engine compression test four cylinder engine and let's start okay uh, please ensure that throttle is fully held now to do that we don't want the car to be running so we're gonna have to disable uh, this somehow so we're just gonna take the injector injectors off like just the plugs uh, so the car won't fire let's do that okay all my injector plugs are off now we're just going to crank this engine and see what sort of compression we get All right, there you have it, guys. Compression looks spot on. I don't see any any problems here. 100, 100, 97, 100. One cylinder is a little bit low, but 97, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't see any compression issue here. So let's move on to uh, uh, something else now. Um, next thing I want to do is maybe check our injectors i want to move on to injectors i'm thinking maybe injectors are leaking or oh, one of the injectors is leaking into the cylinder uh too much fuel that's what i'm thinking so uh you guys have heard of um bottle test where you put the bottle and the pipe little hose in return lines and you check for leak back on return line on diesel uh, injectors that's how we can sort of verify few information there like wow, the condition of the injectors uh, i don't have the bottles uh, but i can do that with uh, my electronic equipments so let me rig that up and uh, we'll um, we'll see uh, what kind of result we get on the injectors All right, guys, this is what I have here. I got a, uh, what is it called, WPS 500. Um, uh, WPS 500, something like that, Pico, make this pressure sensor. In cylinder pressure sensor, you can do uh, up to like, I think 500 PSI. Anyway, if you guys can see that or not. I'll read that. Uh, Hopefully you can catch that. Anyway, doesn't really matter. You can look that up on the internet. Um, so all I'm going to do is 
the pressure gonna go up this way the fuel and it's gonna come out of this way so I'm just gonna make a loop okay now when you're hooking up on the return line you don't have to necessarily loop this back into the return you can always put it in a bucket the return um, the outlet from the sensor but you can hook it up into the car return line as well so it doesn't really matter so we probably just will hook it up uh, the way it should okay now I'm gonna hook this up into the um, uh, return line now also one more thing see this valve here this is a bleeder valve so you got to make sure this bleeder pad is open because you're gonna need to send that pressure somewhere okay so when you push this in it's gonna send the return um, the fuel back to this line here so uh, so this is a spring valve so we're gonna need something to hold this in place okay okay I'm just gonna use a, a jippy tide to tie this uh, in in place all right so let's hook it up into the car and see what we get all right right here this is our return pipe from coming from every individual injectors and I'm just gonna get to the end of it and get that pipe out like that And we're gonna hook up our um, pressure sensor here um, just like doing a fuel pressure re uh, test you know fuel pressure gauge when you hook up on the fuel line we're just doing exactly same thing here okay so we're gonna hook this up the pressure coming into the inlet side of the pressure right here this is the outlet so we're gonna hook this up coming out of the the pipe coming out of the um, injectors okay as such and probably should just put a little in so it'll stay up there like that and we're gonna maybe put a clamp there because they can have a little bit of pressure not a lot but a little bit of pressure And this outlet from the sensor we're gonna put it directly into the metal line there going towards the return side okay so we just made a loop there that's all we did okay now I'm gonna have to get my uh, electronic um, the cables and all that And I'm going to connect that to the scope. We might also hook up a second channel for um, a sink. Um, so let me just set it all up. Let, let's connect this injector lines back again because we're going to need to run the car. All right, now we're gonna select 20 amps is enough to do uh, injector uh, current testing. Okay, so let's just hook it up to um, maybe there on number two. One of the wire, doesn't matter which one. Okay, so I got my pressure tester on the back. Um, 
the back um, leak back um, hose coming from the injector, current clamp on number two injector. Why I picked number two? Because it's, um, I could have picked the number one, but the tape on this insulation looks uh, very strong. I didn't want to tear it, but number two is uh, already been broken. So I'm just going to use number two. Doesn't matter as long as we got the firing order right. All right, let's, um, let's uh, select this. So we probably go, um, maybe range two. Okay, range two does um, minus 15 to 50 PSI. On this one, you can set it off how, which range you want to go, higher pressure, lower pressure on the pressure tester there. Um, let's start the car, make sure nothing is leaking from our um, plumbing there. Give it some time to bleed all the air uh, from the owl plumbing. Make sure all the lines are free, not kinked. Okay, nothing is leaking. I'm happy with that connection we made there. Now let's go up on the scope and let's see what we can do. All right, guys, we got everything hooked up, uh, ready to go. Um, we just gonna start the car and we just capture some data. All right, that's enough data for me. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly talk about this now on the screen. Okay. Um, so this is our number one inject, number two injector firing, right? And we can go and have a look at our uh, injection timing, firing order, one, three, four, two, right? Let's go back. All right, so this is on number two, my amp clamp is on number two, so this is the return let me just make it a little bit clearer let's scale that up a little bit okay right here so this is my number two leak back from the injector uh, this is my number one three four back to one so you see that pattern keeps repeating itself now let's just measure the you can already see that number two injector is not leaking back as much as the other three so we can just measure this this is not important but you can measure this we're sitting about 10 maybe even a bit less let's say 10 psi there and on the high peak we got about uh, let's say almost 11 so we got about maybe one psi of pressure difference there uh, not even one psi uh, but let's let's say one psi right there okay so we got about one psi it's all these three and number one three four cylinder is pretty much similar compared to number two leak back so that makes me believe that number two injector are leaking a bit more fuel than the engine should take okay uh, so we got a leaking injector problem here I believe that's what's happening pretty good uh, uh, waveform capture there and we can see that number two injector might be leaking so what I want to do now is I want to disconnect this uh, fuel injector number two and start the car and let's see I know the engine gonna misfire it's only gonna run on three cylinder but let's see if that improves our symptom okay let's do that all right I've disconnect the number two injector now let's go back onto the tailpipe pipe 
and I'm gonna start this car now and let's see if that improves our smoking problem okay we'll do the same thing I'll put the light there for you guys all right I'll go and start the car now Right, right now the car's only running on three cylinder and I can already see its improvement guys I'm gonna just rev it again and we are definitely not seeing the same type of smoke we we're seeing before so let's go back and we're gonna connect this uh, number three injector again numbers no num sorry number two injector all right the car is running on four cylinder now number two injectors is connected now let's see what sort of smoke coming out I didn't I didn't even have to rev it too much guys you could already see there was a lot of smoke coming out I'll do it again there you have it guys number two injector is leaking too much fuel into the cylinder I think that's why we also have a a hesitation when you go to start the car like sometimes the car doesn't want to start it'll crank but it will not start um, but definitely that was the reason for uh, all this black smoke okay guys because we disconnect the number two cylinder injectors and smokes cleared straight away and as soon as I plugged it in it just uh, leaking massive so and that's what we saw on our back leak test on the picoscope as well guys hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it I will catch you next time.